This video is for you if you want to have a checklist to double check that you're going down the right path. After getting Pentuvala Gears, you want to get the next one item which is called Destruction Spirit Stone. This item is about 1 mil in the market and these are the results for item effects so I highly suggest you guys getting this in the very beginning. After that you guys want to get the artifacts and this is how you can get your artifacts. You can obtain your artifacts from quest grinding spots, dark rift, world bosses, boss summoner scrolls, guild raids and many life skill activities. This is another way to find it. Just go to adventure and then go to monster zone info and then if you guys click every mobs it will tell you all about them where they drop specifically so if you want to find something that you want that's how you find it for artifacts i personally recommend getting the offense ones and i recommend you guys actually getting the monster ap my logic is simple guys right here you guys can see monster ap 6 and melee ap and range ap is like plus 4 and so as you guys can see the reason why melee and range is plus 4 because it also works for pvp and pve however monster ap only works for monsters and so that's why it has more ap Along with that, I recommend you guys getting the Lightstone of Fire Predation. They're only 5 mil each. And then the other one, you need to get this one. And it gives you about 18 AP against monsters. There are definitely better artifacts out there for the effect. But I recommend you guys getting this one first because it's the cheapest way and cheapest ones to get right now. And then if you guys have better money and better gears later on, that's when you guys can start changing the artifacts as well. After that, you guys go do Magnus quest so that you guys can gain one of the any kind of free pen armors. So Magnus requirements, you just need to have main Balanos quest line completion done and it's about level 15. And then these are the rewards that you will get. And the main important one is that you get one pen boss armor and it's bound to family. The reason why you get helmet or gloves in the Magnus quest line is because you lose silvers if you go for boss gears. If you did your research, you can see that with pen boss armors, after you place 7,224 for your helmet, you can turn it into a Lebreska helmet, which is the best helmet armor in the game. If you look at the history of Falling God release date, Falling God was released on October 7th, 2020. And if you look at the Lebreska helmet, it was released on April 6th, 2022. And so it took about, you know, 546 days, which is one year and five months to release the second one for Lebreska Helmet. So if you do the prediction for our third Falling God armor for our gloves, the prediction tells us that it's going to be around October 4th, 2023. So coming back from that, if you add Kafira to get to level 10 on your boss gear for helmet or armor, it's going to cost you about 29.63 bill for helmet and 30 bill for your armor. So if you guys compare with these armors and helmets each along, if you get the armor from Magnus Questline and try to make Falling God yourself, then you're going to lose 1.18 bill. And if you go for helmet, you will save 3.07 bill. By the way, Pen Dim Tree is actually better for 200 health points versus the Red Nose. The only reason we want to go for Red Nose is though is because it's actually cheaper on Kafiros. If you look at the Dim Tree right here for level 10, it's going to cost you about 8,260 for Kafiros. And if you just go for boss armors, which is um, Red Nose, it's going to cost you 7,224. And so in my video, let's just say that I got the Pen Griffin helmet and let's move on to the next one. You guys can make so much benefits just making a seasonal character and one of them is just getting the accessories from Fugar. If you make a seasonal character, Fugar will give you season special gift exchange coupon. With these coupons, you can get the accessories such as the rings or the belt and the necklace, 100 fell stacks, and so on. So with this advantage, we want to get the necklace first because it has, you know, 30 AP and 20 accuracy, which is better than anything out here. Then then the second I would recommend is getting the belt after that. And then on the third one, you can either pick the ring or earring. If once you pick either one of them, you can't pick the other. So make sure you guys do a lot of research. But basically for me, I would go for ring because it has 17 AP versus 13 AP for earring. Another way to simply, you know, comparing to each other is Pen Capuchia is basically same as Tet Crescent Guardian. And Pen Capuchia earring is basically almost equivalent as Narc. But Narc has more, you know, accuracy um, and extra damage to Kama Sylvia. But if you guys see the price difference already is 6.45 for the ring and so you know you guys can clearly see who's the winner right here of 1.1 build difference and so coming back from here again i would get the necklace first here guys and then the belt and then the ring and once you pick the ring you can't get the earring 
And so make sure you guys do your decision there and go from that. And also friendly reminder, seasonal comes, you know, goes like I think there's about usually three seasonals every year. And so it's going to take you guys about a year to get all these three Kaposhia accessories. But until then, I would just recommend you guys, you know, just using the two Valley gears. It's totally fine because once you buy something here, then you're just wasting money there. And so I just recommend you guys just enjoy the game for a year. And then eventually that you guys will get all these three gears in a year. Moving on to the next one is Winter Quest. And so while you guys are waiting for these three accessories to come, while doing so, you guys want to do and get this um, earring. To get that, basically, either you're returning or newer player. If you do the quest called Mounting of Eternal Winter, that's when you can get the earring once you finish the quest line. And if you're a newer player in BDO, I highly suggest you guys trying the Mountain of Eternal Winter quest because it will give you pre-levels up to like level 53. Plus, and you get the earring, and so it's a really, really good start off. And so I recommend you guys doing that when you're your newer player. Once you finish the quest line, you will get this earring. And basically, it's almost as equivalent as Tet Don earring, which costs about 15 bill, guys. And so definitely takes advantage, guys. And so definitely get this earring whenever you can. After getting the earring, the next one what we want to focus on is getting the pen guarantee accessory for your ring. And so from here, it's going to look like this. And then you guys will get Pen Ring of Crescent Guardian. If you guys don't know about this free pen accessory, definitely Google it out and figure out what it is. And basically it gives you a pen accessory with the three options of these accessories that you guys can get, either the rings or the earrings. Reason why we want to go for Pen Crescent Ring instead of other earrings is because you guys can see the price differences. And so clearly this is the winner. And so that's why I recommend you guys and suggest you getting the ring instead of earrings. To get this quest started, you have to be level 56 plus short quest line and doing the cry for help. And you have to talk to Black Spirit, which is pressing comma to pull out your Black Spirit and then go to quest and then go to suggestion and then find a cry for help to start your quest. After that, you want to go to Jatina and then find Old Moon's Guild's trade offer. And then that's when you guys can do the daily quest from her. And then you guys can either kill or do a life skill quest. I recommend doing the daily kill because it gives you two powder but then doing daily life skill gives you one. And so, you know, two is definitely better than one and it will going to make you, you know, get the ring as soon as possible. So I recommend you guys doing the daily kill quest. So once again, if you do one quest for killing, you get two and then you will need to complete about 90 quests for pen and 90 days takes about three months, guys. And so good luck out there for all those grinders. Friendly reminder, you guys don't have to go step by step what I teach you guys. You guys can definitely do the Magnus quest right away if you want or do the pen accessory or, you know, just getting the Fugar quest. And so this is just a guide, guys, to help you guys understand what you guys can maybe do if your foundation is okay and what you have done so far is maybe good so far and just double checking with me, basically. Moving on to the next one, which is Jetina's Guaranteed Pen Boss Gear. So if you guys graduated with Pen Tuvala Gears, you can exchange it to Tet Boss Gears. And if you turn in your Pen Tuvala, you can either get Tet of Gaiath or Griffin. Gloves, you can get Liber or Bags. Shoes, you can get Muskins or Eurgrones. And Armor and so on. Pen Tuvala is basically equivalent of Tet Gaiath. And if you compare with Griffin, definitely Griffin has some better gears. But then does you do lose some, you know, minus 100 of health points. And so that's the difference here, guys. And so if you like this more method, definitely go for it. Pen Tuvala armor is basically equivalent of Tet Dimtree, guys. And so right here, guys, we don't want to honestly go for Dimtree because remember how Dimtree costs more Kafiras. And so if you guys are making it yourself for Falling God, you guys want to go for Red Nose. And so you guys want to do that. And if you get Tet, just realize and notice that Tuvala armor is actually better with health points of 200 difference. And then for shoes, um, Pen Tuvala shoes is basically equivalent of Muskin shoes of Tet. And if you guys change that to Urgons, you guys can see that you guys can get more damage reduction right here. So it's 74 DP right here and then 76. So if you guys actually change it to Urgons, you guys will see the notice and the difference right here. So I highly recommend you guys getting the Urgons right here. Pen Tuvala gloves is basically equivalent of Beg's gloves. And so if you guys want to make that different to Lieber, um, this is what it looked like. And then Libra is more for evasion build. And evasion build is not as efficient in the beginning. So I highly recommend you guys just leaving, you know, just in Pen Tuvala gloves. Or you guys, if you guys want, you guys can change it to Tet Beg. Pen main weapon is basically almost equivalent as Zarka. Only difference is that Zarka has critical hit damage 2% more than Tuvala. And the other option for the main was Often. And if you get Often, you can get up to 3 more AP 
but then lose 18% of accuracy. However, um, you get 2% critical hit damage as well and plus 2 crit hit level. Um, if you want to go for often, it's because of the AP bracket. So what is AP bracket? AP brackets are basically, it gives you a bonus AP depending on what kind of AP do you have. And so let's say that you have 255 AP, which relies right here, and you will get 69 more AP extra. And let's say that if you had 270 AP, which lies around right here, and so you will get 137 for extra AP, for example. And also it has for DP brackets as well, and you can get like percentage wise for extra DR. As you guys can see here too, in Arena of Solaire, if you guys are Succession in 3v3, um, all the highest ranked players, even first, second, and top hundreds, I'm pretty sure, went for often because they know that they can get more AP bracket just doing so. And so there's example for this guy right here, and then Armin, and often right here as well for the scenario. So going off in here can be also a good strategy if you want to boost that up for the AP bracket. If not, you can just safely pick, you know, Zarka because Zarka can be really good for the PvP content as well. There's literally no option for Awakening Pen Tuvala for boss weapon and boss weapon for that is just Dandelion. And they're basically same stat, nothing really changes. Also friendly reminder here guys, the AP and Awakening AP is totally different thing. And so AP is for Succession AP, and then Awakening Weapon AP is for your Awakening. And as you guys can see here, that the AP bracket for AP is higher than the Awakening AP. And so if you're Awakening main, you want to increase your Awakening Weapon AP instead of your AP. And so just don't get confused by that guys, and so hopefully you guys understand that. And let's move on to the next one. And then lastly, right here, Pen Tuvala for the sub weapon is equivalent as Kurum. And Kurums are really good for PvE grinding. And it also gives you a really nice DP, which is armor. And so I highly suggest you guys using Kurum because, again, BDO is PvE content. The other option you can go for is Nuver, but I highly don't recommend it, especially in the early game because it gives you a lot of AP. However, you do lose a lot of DP. And the fact that there's a lot of BDO players out there that are stronger than you. And so, you know, you're, it's just not going to be as, as efficient in grinding. And so I highly suggest you guys getting the Kudum. For those people who are still wondering what comparison of Kudum and Nuver, this is the result right here, guys. And so again, Kudum, you get 54 monster damage, which is really nice. And the resistance and the defense is better than Nuver for sure. And you get a decent offense for monster damage. But then you do lose some little more AP versus Nuver. But again, in the end, everybody's gonna recommend you guys going for Kudum for PvE content, unless they just wanna troll you. So with my previous advice, I would change this Pen Tuvala shoes guys to Yurgons to Tet. And I'll probably just leave this as Tuvala gloves itself because it's equivalent as Beg, and they're really good for DPs instead of evasion. Same thing right here, I would just leave it as Pen Tuvala armor because it's equivalent as Dim Tree. We all learned that we have to change main hand to boss gear because it gives us 2% crit hit damage and if you want to change your awakening to dandelion go for it but you don't have to because they're basically equivalent and for um, sub weapon 100 kudum guys if you are pve content so if you guys follow my guide so far it would look something like this if you guys have more time definitely get into these journals guys google all these names individually what it is and if you guys do all of these you guys can get up to so much ap all the way up to 268 ap if you made it this far, congratulations, and I have some bad news. Thing with BDO and mid gear is that you're kind of stuck until you hit 280 AP and 340 DP. Problem is that now with these gears, you will need to suck it up and start grinding for better gears. And here is the big question for you guys. You have two scenarios. Either you can enhance it yourself to get there or buy it in the market. Sometimes enhancing your gears without any strategy or plans in mind is very risky move. When it turns out well, congratulations with your enhancing, but if you did fail your enhancing on your gears, that was probably the last time you logged into BDO until the next event happens and you know giving out free J hammers and crown stones. So in order to avoid that, you probably just want to buy it in the market as is so that way it doesn't, you know, give you EMOTIONAL DAMAGE So what I'm about to show you next is either you get up there by enhancing or just buy it in the market, it's up to you. But my personal recommendation is definitely just grind it out, get lots of money, and just buy it in the market. That would be the safest play to play the BDO. 
there is no right or wrong way to play this game. It's totally up to you. You know, it's really fun to just enhancing for fun if you have money for it and yeah, just enjoying the game in content in general. Anyways, let's move on to the next one. So after with all these gears, what we want to get is actually main black star right here, guys, and try to get it up to Tet if you can. If not, you can stop at try if you want, but then I really recommend you guys pushing towards Tet. If you want to know reason behind it, definitely check out my video right here. And I'll also put the link on the top right for you. Welcome back. And so let's move on to the next one is probably getting my awakening weapon. So that's what you guys want to do and get it up to Tet as well. From here now on, there is no right or wrong orders to do so. For example, if you want to get more AP, we want to upgrade their earring right here. Or if you want more armors, you want to start upgrading your shoes and gloves right here and also get the Falling God here as soon as possible. Also, don't forget to put your alt character to start putting in the bosses such as Vels, Karanda, and Garmok. If you get Karanda, you can get Storm, Devour Dandelion right here, which gives you one slot for the crystal right here. Or if you get a Garmoth Heart, you can get a Fury, and then you can add two crystals, for example. And then I would recommend putting the this one, the purple stone right here, that gives extra AP against monsters, seven for both of them. And it also gives you attack, casting speed, 1%. So it's really, really nice for PvE content. And then for Vel right here, guys, you guys can start upgrading to Vel's Heart, which will also give you 3 AP and 10 accuracy right there with a lot of item effect now as well. And so I highly recommend you guys doing that and then eventually that you guys will hit one of this. Meanwhile, you guys are grinding for world bosses. I would start probably upgrade the armors right here for better foundation for DP. And as you guys can see again, if you guys watch the video for this one for the armors, there's the answers right there for whoever is lacking about Black Star Gears. And so I highly recommend you guys checking this out before you guys commenting toxic words to me and say that Black Stars are bad because clearly they have potential and I think they're amazing gears and I still use them today. Once again, BDO is PvE content. You can only make silvers just by doing, you know, PvE. And it's the most efficient way to make silvers. And so why not invest it on PvE content? Let's move on to the next topic. And it is going to be about DP efficiency. We have quite a few suggestions from some adventurers. And I believe their opinion was regarding PvP, not PvE. In Tafion Ball, one of the BD player announced that PvP DP is too in inefficient. So in the end, they talked about how they always get one-shotted. So here is my question to you guys. If you're going with boss gears to prevent DP from PvP, but still getting one-tapped, why invest on the boss gears anyways in the first place then? The fact that people cheered up so much is because they absolutely agree that the boss gears are still lacking on DP for PvP content. So why are you guys still going for PvP, right? Uh, we believe that if uh, we were to make a sudden change to the system, the gap would uh, only grow larger. As such, we're trying to take a step-by-step step step approach. Um, like the comment that you get one-shotted by others, we also to a certain extent agree that the efficiency of these DP mechanics is uh, the recent addition of Bell's Heart to help increase the DP was a step forward of addressing this situation, and we will steadily make pro progress in this direction. So just like they announced in Calfion Ball, that they want to increase your DP step-by-step -step approach. Such as, for example, they recently added the Bless Bell's Heart to get two more DP from there, right here, guys. And you guys can get two more DP from that. And they just added one called Exalted Bell's Heart. You know, two additional DP from Blessed Bell's Heart. And so they just want to keep increasing DP from here, guys. And so the fact that they're not going to change anything on the Black Stars and Boss Armors, they will just keep adding to whatever you guys have from now on. And so after checking my video out, I hope you guys are back and agree with me that we should go for Black Stars. And if you do so, we want to get up here to Tet for these ones. And they only cost about 9 bill, and so, you know, I recommend you guys doing that. And then with the set effect, we can get up to monster damage reduction plus 5 right here, and then plus 4 for this one right here as well. And we can also get monster damage reduction plus 10 for 2 set effect right here. For those who still have doubters, look at this right here, guys. The price different wise, it's 9 bill right here again, 
and 8.75 and 8.5 for pen boss gears right here and let's look at the comparison it's about look at that 60 more health points right here that you can get more damage reductions and amazing monster damage reduction by plus 19 damage reduction rate you get one percent more as well because of the dp bracket and so you guys can see clearly 331 dp also as right here versus 327 so when you guys are grinding in the very beginning i highly recommend going for black stars because it's just so much better for gear score in general as well with that bonus of damage reduction rate and all these pluses on the left side and so clearly it tells you that it's still better also look at this i posted this a month ago and i already have 11,000 people watching it about my gears and clearly they like my content because the black star back then was 8.15 bill which is basically 8 bill and now after one month you know one bill went up already guys and now it's 9 bill and so you guys can see the pattern like everybody started to like black stars and they will start buying them so after another month i'm pretty sure this is gonna be 10 bills so before it's too late i really hope you guys get these because you know time goes by and the price goes different enough of black star bashing and now let's move on to the next step if you start getting any free kafiras you want to start adding them on your helmet and get it up to level 10 and if you do you will get up to 10 dp so right now i have 333 and if i get it up all the way up to level 10 it's gonna be 343 and once you get that to level 10 all you have to do is just buy the flame of frost and get the quest done google it that's how you guys are gonna change this to labrasca and then get that from clean to duo and that's where you guys want to stop to duo this is another reason why black stars are so nice guys that you guys can focus one boss gears at a time instead of multiple boss gears i have a scenario here what happens if you go boss armor instead of black star one problem with this one is that you have to kind of focus and do a lot of math to be efficient of kafira levels you need to start thinking where you want to put your kafiras on which part so that way your ap and dp can be efficient and so i did side by side comparison here guys black star versus um, the boss gears of almost close enough money wise and then this is the answer if you go for boss gears you guys will clearly need more kafira's amount of 5k for this scenario and if you guys look at the marnie unstable fuel clearly it tells that you will cost more on black stars which because if we now look at the stats this is the result we can get plus 32 extra AP against monsters if you go black star but we do lose some bonuses AP because the AP bracket not even that though, we all get more defense right here, all the plus 2s and 4s, plus 19 monster damage reduction. Boss gears are definitely better in the end game, but that's when you have more than 80 bill. And so until then, that's why black stars are so good for temporary wise, because you still need to focus on your earring, and another ring right here, and your armor right here, and your sub weapon. And then once you figure out with all these gears right here, that's when you can start changing your armors and gloves, back to boss gears coming back to our gear progression so after you guys get dual libresca we want to probably start getting working on our earrings so now you guys have two options for this if you guys like grinding at kama sylvia like an upper guy fin with your partners and teams or just go to like other locations for kama sylvia you want to get the tech narc earring accessory because it gives you a nice dp decent amount of ap and also gives you a really nice buff for extra damage to kama sylvia if not, I will recommend you the other one, which is Black Distortion Earring. And I recommend you guys getting the Tet. However, you guys do lose minus 4 right here because it gives you amazing amount of the AP right here. And so for me, as a ninja player, I do want more damage than the DP. And so I will probably go for Black Distort Tet right here. And then now this is our result. Now we have 282 with 345 DP. Looking like this, guys. Congratulations. Now with this amount of AP and DP, now you guys can look at the grind tracker in Garmok.com and look at this guys, if you have 150 stacks of using the second level of scrolls and agris, we can get up to 975 silver in orc camp. And then let's say that your agris burned out and so now this will be the result. However, you still make 613 silver in orc camp. By the way, using Agris in Orcs is not really a good idea, and so I recommend you guys using the Golden Blessing of Agris where you guys get it once in a while from the event. As you guys can see, Orcs is usually like the very best high up there to make money, and so it's really, really good spot. It's top 4 right now, 
And so I highly recommend you guys start grinding crazy in Orc Camp to get the other gears. So after making lots of money, this is the fun part. And it's all up to you guys. Either you guys can work on your ring right here. Or get another earring. Upgrade your Fallen God. Or upgrade your sub weapon. And you know me, I love Black Star. So I'm probably gonna get a Black Star right here for my sub weapon to Tet. After that, I'll probably get this another distal right here and get it up to Tet as well. After that, the hardest one is just grinding this armor right here, guys, to Fallen God because the duo is about 36 bill in the market right now. And so it's up to you if you guys want to buy the clean one and just enhance it yourself. Or just straight off buy it from the market for 36 bill. Also, I have something to say here quickly. As you guys can see here, Orc Camp, all you need is 340. And so getting up to 340 now is piece of cake where you are now. But then now pushing up to 390s and 400s and 380s can be tricky. And pushing that much amount of DP, you'll probably need more than 80 bill. And so you guys just have to think that, you know, why go for hard ones when you can easily just go for Orc Camp. Which gives you, you know, 600 mil versus on the second one, which is 380 DP on Gaifen, is, you know, 20 mil more difference. Same thing with the other ones, it's about 100 or 200 mil difference, but then at the same time, is it actually really worth it? And so that's kind of actually downside about BDO is that um, the APDP bracket is not really balanced for grinding zones because it's not as rewarding as you think. The sad part is that, look at this, guys, Primo Giant Post. 290 with 380 AP, but then look at Orc right here, 280 and 340. And so clearly this place is harder to grind, but then you're still making less efficient of silver. And so that's the really, you know, difficult part about BDO is that you're going to be stuck in grinding in Orc camp forever until you guys reach until 300 AP with like 400 DP. So that's the reality of BDO. So welcome to BDO where you're forever stuck in Orc camp if you want to be efficient in grinding for silver. But if you want to still enjoy it, definitely check out all these other locations. And so, yeah, that's what I just wanted to bring it up. So until you guys can actually grind at Quint or Hex, let's keep getting our DPs up. And don't forget the LVL Cups, guys. You guys can either buy in the market or just grind it yourself. But it's really competitive to get the market, so I recommend you guys just grinding yourself in Ser Serendia server. If you guys do so, you guys can get all these amazing cups. So first thing you guys want to get for the cups are for your rings. And so instead of Kapotia, you want to get the Starlet, and it will give you crit hit damage of 3%. You want to get the other one for the other ring as well, and let's move on to the next one. Next one is probably the earrings, which is this one, a Boreal. And so that's what you guys want to get, and it will give you guys hidden AP plus 3. After that, you guys have two options for the belt. First one is Night Fallen, and the second one is Tito. Night Fallen you gives you 3 AP, and then Tito gives you damage reduction. Usually people recommend you getting the damage reduction, but it's your preference. After that, Kaposia, you want to get the Moonlit. And these ones you guys can buy in the market easily, like there's always in stock. And so don't worry about it and just buy it. After that, if you guys can, try to get the second Garmoth Heart and you guys can put it in your sub weapon and it will give you guys some great benefits. If you guys do put the Garmoth Heart in the sub weapon, you guys can gain up to 150 health points, 100 stamina, and 10% special attack evasion rate. Some of you have definitely the same question as I did before. Um, should I go for, you know, Ted Blackstar to God Ear or just leave it as Ted Blackstar and then hit it to Pen? And so I actually made a YouTube video about it, guys. And so if you guys can find that and then click on it and then watch it, you can maybe help you, you know, the truth about God Ear versus Blackstar. After you made your decision, go from there. But I actually recommend just leaving one of your Black Stars instead of Godder. And the reason is this. Every now and then, Black Desert offers a big, big event such as like Calfion Ball or Hydro On. And then it gives you guys amazing rewards. And one of them is actually J Hammer of Loyalty. And J Hammer of Loyalty is basically enhancing something and doesn't cost any Crown Stones. And so for Ted attempt to pen attempt for Black Star costs a lot of Crown Stone, guys. It's about like 3,600. And so I highly recommend you guys, you know, just keeping one of them as the Ted Black Star. And just use this J Hammer and, you know, if you feel lucky, you might just get pen for free. Also, I was kind of surprised that they actually didn't mention about our third Falling God, which is for our gloves. 
And so they actually didn't mention it, so I'm pretty sure we still have to wait for another 6 months or so. And so I kind of recommend you guys still using the Black Star until it's time. So as you guys are waiting for the gloves Fallen God to come out, I would just upgrade in your Vel's Heart. Get the Blessed One first because it's 2 DP. After that, if you have more money, then get the Exalted Vel's. After that, with J Hammers, I hope you know you hit one of these to pen. And yeah, if you guys also want to... You guys can actually start changing these to bag gloves if you want. Get it up to pen and get it up to level 10 and just get ready until the next Falling God armor comes out for the glove. Once you change the other one though, you might want to change the other one as well because the two set effect of monster damage reduction plus 10. And so once you change that to bag gloves, you probably want to change that to your gun as well for pen at least level 10 of Kafiras. If you don't have enough money for both of them like this for Kafira level 10, I don't recommend you guys, you know, just changing it to like Kafira or bags of like level 3 or level 5. Make sure you guys have enough money. Keep grinding until you guys can make about 28 or 30 bill. And so that way you guys have enough money to put a lot of Kafiras to be ready to have better DP. Nice thing with going with Black Stars, you guys can sell these easily and just get your money back about, you know, six or seven bill back. And hopefully that you guys can easily just change it to boss gears whenever you can. And that is basically it guys. Try to make this to pen if you can. And after that, try to get this all the way up to 20 if you can. And then you guys will have about 300 AP with 400 DP where 400 DP is actually good enough to grind at Hex. You can finally grind in the top one zone of Hex Sanitary of 877 mil per hour. And if you turn on your aggress, you can make a bump to like 1.237 bill. And so yeah, enjoy with that. And you know, after that, you guys can easily change to necklace, get an ogre ring if you want or anything that will help you. And same thing with these ones, get the ones that will help you and then, you know, get your APs up step by step. And also don't forget the ring here. I'll probably just get the ring of Crescent because it's the cheapest one and don't forget to make it as a starlet as well. And that'll be a wrap up for this video. You guys will end up with 313 AP and 402 DP and enjoy your journey after that. And so let me know what you guys think and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Ciao, ciao.